Hello everyone, welcome to the 8th Chebcast, and this one we're talking about why is necromancy considered evil? And a good starting point is probably the generalization thing. So basically it became a kind of trope in fiction where the necromancers are sort of spooky bad guys and so everyone else kind of decided yeah, we'll just keep necromancers as spooky bad guys rather than investigate other ways of using them. There are some fictions, though, that have investigated the other ways of using them, and we'll get to that later. I think a good point to raise, that seventh here, by the way. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot the introductions again. I was about to raise that thought to myself. Should I, should I not? <laughs> We're here with Seventh Outpost, It's Ghost Yo. UK, and So Hello. High for Hentai. Yo. That noise is just perfect for your name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so generalization and its points. Um, I would say, to add my brick to this, is that it's been so set as a trope. Uh, it's not the point that it's just been being done the same way. It's just that nobody investigates or explains why. It's just assumed that a necromancer means an evil guy. Exactly. And I believe that this podcast should be helpful to exploring why that is considered and when it could be wrong. Very well put, Seventh. Um, something to mention with this. Necromancy can definitely be used for good things. Like You can use it to put people to rest. You can use it to um give people a sort of consolation when it comes to death you know things like that like you, you can you can have it where if someone's got an ancestor or, or or somebody that's died recently and they want to talk to them and necromancer is able to do that yet we only ever typically see a very exaggerated overly malicious um way in which this is kind of done as in as in, like, take Warhammer, for example, where you've got necromancers, and I think, I can't think of any character that's not evil in that, to an extent, because when it comes, because when it comes to necromancy, I think in the lore it's mentioned that, you know, people that sort of do go into, search, go into researching it get corrupted, or they get evil, or they are just evil for doing it, and therefore it translates into them doing evil shit. About Warhammer, um, there is one exception. True. Mm. Uh, there's this like clan called Clan Rictus and it's the clan of humans also weird that there's a Clan Rictus of Skaven but this... I was going to say I thought to myself wait a minute <laughs> yeah. but this is actually a different thing and it's mentioned in one of the Nagash books that I read and basically mm. there's a woman in that who's like the only good necromancer I've found in Warhammer and she's actually like a disciple of, of Nagash and basically she raises her skeletons, but they're kind of like willing servants of her. They're like her ancestors mm. and they want to protect her. That's the only example of good necromancy I found in Warhammer. And there is another example of good necromancy in a completely different book called Necroscope, which I can go into, but I'd like mm. to let Seventh make his point before I go into that. Um, okay, so I have let's say, separated the arguments for why necromancy is considered evil and why in many, many cases it is evil. So I suppose I will play the part of the devil's advocate. Although I think in this particular case, uh, I would I would advocate for God and you will be the ones advocating for devil. Um, so um, with regards to how what necromancy requires at some of the base level is basically breaking let's say cosmic laws in a way of most religions i think most if not all religions including the most primitive shamanisms have a degree of reverence toward human body regardless of whether there's life in it or not the 
even in the shamanistic religions, uh, like like the primitive ones that where where they where you know you have cannibals eating the corpses, there's a degree of reverence in it. They they usually it's like eating the corpses of their ancestors or eating the corpse of an opponent in order to gain their strength. It's all done in a deeply spiritual fashion. And because of that, um, necromancy is a bit of a, let's say, it, it, it's put on the, on the evil scale because it denies that entirely. It looks at a body only as a mass of flesh, as something uh, to become the building block for a golem after a fashion. Hence why, you know, it just you just wave your wand, wand and uh, a corpse stands up and it does your bidding just as you will. Um, it's kind of like, so basically when it comes to a lot of these, it's the body is a temple and necromancy is ransacking the temple. Yeah. In a way, yes, but also the fact that how should I say it? It's kind of like property as well, right? Because right. it's like my body is, you know, it's, it's my property. And, and when I die, then it's still kind of a moral gray ground to just be like, well, you're dead, so your things don't belong to you anymore. Well, we have rules in our society for that. We, we have like our testaments. We have all kinds of things to preserve uh the the notion of of belonging and of course of of the sanctity of the human body um and grave hence robbing. why hence why being like oh well you know I'm, I'm just gonna rob graves you know yeah going going on to that i can't help but think that when it comes to death there is like there's such a big thing to it compared to life because when it comes to death it is more yeah. unknown it's it's yeah. scary to a lot of people so with that in mind messing around with that can be very very upsetting to a lot of people which i, I can imagine that's true that's true because um let's say not just on the spiritual and logical level but also mm -hmm. on the uh, pragmatic level uh, necromancers as they deal with De uh, decomposing corpses that you know they deal with disease so getting close to a necromancer getting close to a zombie or anything of the sort a decaying body is very very likely to get you diseased you know it's like yeah. all kinds of wrongness not just on the level of spirituals you know it's um but I wanted to continue on the topic of utilitarianism. Mm -hmm. It it's basically how should I say? I think even amongst the mainly like mostly atheistic communities, and even for mostly atheistic people, I think most people wouldn't want to be considered just their flesh, and and be just. Um, just like oh well you know i'm i'm a working machine and once i stop working i'm just going to be taken apart and like put into other machines i i i think most people wouldn't want that mm. because the proposition that we are just our limited flesh is i think quite daunting and necromancy like just kind of assumes that it's like well we're just like I'm, I'm i'm just going to take this body and use it as a a next um machine you know i'm just going to prolong the life of this machine even if if the program that was running it broke down you know i'm gonna install a new program and, and, and keep on running this machine i think there's a very thorough um scary in a way and disturbing thought in there mm. Um, would it be uh, would it be worth mentioning a sort of genetic fear, I guess, of death? Yeah, 
Because yeah. because you see yeah. this, you can see this with spiders. Death and disease. De yeah, death yeah. and disease. Yeah. Because you can see this with death. You can see this with spiders. Uh, you can see this with quite a few things that over the years we have learned to fear and shy away from. It's like it inspires a primordial sort of um, fear of yeah. that thing in yeah. order to save ourselves and keep us alive. Because if you fear it, then you're not going to get near it. And if you're not going to get near it, you, it's not going to affect you. Yeah. And would that sort of uh, go into that and kind of like, I mean, take, take for example, you've got a, a tribe of early humans and one of them dies and they under they don't know what death is. They just understand that when you die, you just don't get back up. Imagine if somebody was to die and then they did get back up, rotting and decayed. Yeah. The amount of fear that would inspire in them, because uh, they don't understand it and it's never happened before. Like it's a it's you can kind of see that how that would go and how that would develop and how they would do art about it and how they would write about it and how they would verbally remember it and yeah. keep it. And then as time goes on, they they keep it going. They keep it going until it gets to, say, a more modern period of time, wherein it's there is a there is an abstract, gen, uh, general fear of just the undead. Amongst other things, yeah. I mean, arguably, undead, or not like that fundamental to. Um, human religion and, and mythology mm. and, uh, you know not as fundamental as, as some other things but the, that's not the point i'm making um what i'm saying is like um people are afraid of death and anything that deals with death is ample to get their this mistrust yeah um the other thing after this is like it's kind of like an interruption to the natural cycle of life, right? That could also yeah. be a great cause of uh, hatred yeah. and fear and mistrust. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, you know, things break down, etc. And then mm. you're kind of trying to go around that. It's I similar do. with with necromancy that is like, you know, summoning spirits because spirits are supposed to stay you know where they should be right they, they should pass on to the afterlife whatever it, it may be you don't like keep them around you know with very small exceptions you know with with, with maybe the exception of like ancestral spirits but it's it's a, a, a bit of a different thing i do i do have uh something like that in my world wherein it's basically souls in armor, and they uh, are kept around to do things what normal people can't do, essentially, because, you know, they're undead, so why not have them do what would be fatal to anyone else? And because they're still intelligent, um, they're, they're completely aware. They are still themselves, just they are souls in armor. And they some of them will be thousands of years old, and as they live on, they are relics of their time. And this is represented in like the armor that they wear at the time, which keeps with them and all of that it's when the way with how the way with how things work there is a degree of darwinism in everything in life isn't there you can't live for too long because then you're not going to you're not going to adapt or evolve and this goes with the species um, as well the the I, I I'd hate to only use the Bible as as a metaphor I, I would probably be able to to bring up other things but long story short things like the nephilim um who were essentially immortal in yeah. a way uh the, the the proposition that these things were immortal is something that is basically like like if you live forever you are um inevitably going to turn evil or insane in some way yeah it, it's not just the bible that makes this proposition it could be yeah. that as well as like um like you're manipulating another person like something like that can will kind of like slowly eat away yeah. at you it's like uh it's like the same thing with the cannibalism is like at like at how uh, at what point do you see other people as people or at one point they start just becoming like another piece of food for you it's like a yeah. question of like how much humanity do you get to keep after a certain period of time and i yeah. think it also necromancy is also definitely seen as evil because of the fact that like um like people basically have this like obsession or at least like this whole need or, or at least to say that like um 
let the dead rest. Let them mm -hmm. have their sleep. Let Re them respect the dead. Let, let them... Respect yeah. The yeah. Yeah. I think the most basic proposition of that is that, um, you know, human corpse carries a lot of disease. And more than more so than animal corpses, in fact. Uh, mainly because, well, that that depends on what disease we're disease, sorry diseases we're looking at, but um, arguably there are quite a few parasites that can be in like human feces and human corpse uh, that can be spread if you let's say try to start a farm over a graveyard. Not a good idea ever. Hence why it's like, you know, you just put them into the earth, just let them stay there, don't touch it. That sort mm. of approach. Yeah. I have one question for you guys. So mm. going along with the whole breaking of natural order and all that, there are ways in which we do that in real life and it's sort of accepted, right? Like mm. um, no one has a problem with repairing someone's broken heart with like whatever surgeries they do to grant basically unnatural extended life mm. why is like that okay? <laughs> um yeah. how I was this... sorry yeah go on. go on oh okay go. i was i was uh, i was gonna say like um to go on to that and to summarize what i was saying earlier is when it's when you're alive like you live you reproduce you die yeah and you you grow life grows and changes and stuff like that when you're dead you don't have that when you're a literature that has lived for thousands of years you are a relic of your time and you're from a past time that you will never go back to so it's on it's it's it is very unnatural for anything to die and to continue to be to exist for an extended That's period true. of time yeah. And when it comes when it comes to life, um, there is the positives of long life, and there's also the negatives. Because in living a good long life, yes, you you accumulate knowledge, you can do great things and invent things for your species, and uh, do a lot of things for that. But the counter to that is you're also spreading a lot of your genes around as well. I and... think um, big big thing probably uh, with regards to. Um, let me actually address what Chep said with regards to the yeah, yeah. medicine and surgeries, because I have a whole big point about that. Oh, yeah, go, um, go, go, go. You see, with regards to surgeries, we kind of have the, and that's generally the, the point of the modern medicine, is like, we know that we aren't going to keep anyone alive forever. Like, mm. that, that is that is just the, the thing. It's like, your patient is going to die. Like, whether you want it or not. Um... I mean, uh, arguably, eventually. if you look at um, meaning, you will realize that, uh, in a way, uh, doctors are like death priests yeah. because every medicine, I mean, real medicine, I'm not talking about some fucking active cold, something like that. Uh, I mean, like, every real medicine is poison in proper dosage. Um, one... And the purpose, again... One point I'd like to just make real quickly is like, I think the the biggest problem that people have with it all is the under aspect. Like, imagine you yeah. have like a, like your your grandfather just died, right? No yeah, one would yeah. have a problem with a doctor coming along and like bringing him back to proper life. Yeah, I mean yeah. it depends on who's going to get his inheritance, but yeah, <laughs> and, and I, I, that's true. But like like morally, yeah, yeah, you, you're right, you're right. Yeah, so I think like the whole undeath part is probably the most morally objectionable part of necromancy yeah. rather mm -hmm. than just the resurrection. Yeah, because it's upside down life. I think we brought up some of that in uh, in the Lich talk, but this is yeah. still... Uh, we can go a little bit more in, in depth on that. Um, yeah, it is it is utterly unnatural. And... How should I say? It, it's not unnatural in the way artificial things are. It's unnatural in the way that, like, in a way magic is, or how should I say it? It's like the reverse of natural, the, the way things should work. Hence why it's, it's scary, in a way, because it's, it's, um, 
yeah, it's it's the the opposite of, of what what should be in a way. What I was going to say when it comes to the moral bit, yes and no. Like it says, it, no nobody would object to keeping uh, an old person alive. People would object if the old person is suffering. If the old person is dementia, they've got no clue who they are. If every day they wake up and they're not able to get out of bed or they're not able to do anything because they're in that much pain and they've got no clue who any of them around them are and they're confused and out of the mind, at, the, at which point everything is terrifying and it's not so much keeping them alive because it's beneficial for them. It's more to keep them alive out of principle. Yeah, that's a big problem in our society. That mm. is probably not a conversation for necromancy but for True. medicine to have yeah um yeah fair enough and compare yeah let's let's not compare the de dementia patients to undead <laughs> so, I, mean, I, was, I was gonna say i was gonna say that oh, sorry what no i'm saying it's like that'd be weird yeah i was gonna <laughs> I, was, I was gonna make a joke that uh doctors are just really shit necromancers <laughs> <laughs> They're the best necromancers you can have, long story short, in this world. <laughs> so, um, That's actually a really good fucking point as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, bow down before me. I'm the only real one amongst us. Hey, yes. Um, but coming back to the, the point is that if you... Um, there have been quite a few reported cases of... Um, and I, I swear, I th this is this all ties to necromancy. Uh, there have been a few reported cases of doctors who live in blocks of flats, basically getting all kinds of negative responses, like like letters telling them to get the hell out of um, that block of flats because Sorry. they carry the disease in, right? So, so oh. all, all kinds of like, all kinds of threats and all kinds of, you know, disapproving um, messages and such, basically calling them unclean, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're carrying the, the disease in, right? Because the, the doctor inevitably, you know, works with disease. This is especially true if it comes to infectious diseases. But, it's especially true um, nowadays. Yeah, especially true nowadays, but um, how should I say it? That's, I think, why doctors have always been, at least at some level, mistrusted. It, it's like one of the bigger, um, one of the more logical and the bigger fears. Um, if you, we look at the history of World War II, etc., etc., we will find plenty of very, very terrible doctors. Because Can... it's basically like it's kind of very close to death. Because as I've said, every medicine is poison. Can this explain why, in a lot of uh, media and a lot of history and whatnot, or sort of it's generally accepted that doctors or uh, pra or medical practitioners or medicine men or witches or whatever, so on and so forth, live not in the village but outside of it, like in their own home, away from everyone else? I mean. Which doctors and real doctors are a different thing, but or yeah, they're they're. I mean, I mean, like, they have that general purpose, as in to to make people better and to do medicine. Just different ways of going about it. Yeah. That too. Um, I don't think doctors live outside of the village. Uh, I think the the hospitals were made, were built, especially the first hospitals were built outside of the city to keep the disease out because they were you know the, the lazaruses because the point of them was to keep the, the the diseased people out rather than to heal them hence why this is kind of how should i say it like like, like the, the the point of of, of dealing with death mm. Um, I, was about, I was about to ask something that's not necromancy related, but it's was, it was basically about as to why COVID is spreading around so so easily because everyone's living so closely together. But no, yeah, that's among other things true. Um, I think partially what's what's important to note is that in our current 
utterly demystified world, um, you, we don't treat things with proper reverence. So, by uh, I would say by by uh, I know it, it may sound funny, but like by uh, let me let me actually draw the, the the line of conclusions that we don't actually like realize that, for example, like like fully in internalize it that medicine has to be taken exactly c according to the instructions mm. you know people take medicine incorrectly uh you get people who have diabetes medicine who forget to take a dose and then take two doses right when they remember mm. and that is very bad can kill you potentially what i to, to go on to that I can't help but think that, especially with how that has gone on, people nowadays, they're not just complacent when it comes to disease, but as a species, we have kind of removed our fear of it, haven't we? Oh, if I'm ill, I'll just go to the doctor. Oh, well, my arm's missing, I'll just go to the doctor, etc., etc. It's not so much the case where in the... Um, we a, have the, trivialized it, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Well, it's. I think the uh, trivialization is coming to an end because... Like antibiotics are becoming less and less effective, so yes, yeah. It's like COVID was do. arguably one of the like smallest problems we have right now. Yeah, I I love that so much. Which sounds weird, but but it's it's the idea that um, essentially diseases are tr are looking at the cures to them as diseases themselves, and they're becoming immune to what is effectively their diseases. In a way, yes. Yeah, and and it's, so you got like superbugs yeah. that are going. I, that amuses me a lot. I know it shouldn't, but it's just. Yeah, because you are no, no, you are fighting poison with poison. Like yeah, not not exactly literally, but like you're fighting diseases with antibiotics, which are poison, right? Mm. So, so you, you're 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 fighting. You know, I wouldn't say fire with fire in objective manners, but like yeah, you are fighting poison with poison. All right. Um, Sorry to be the the guy who brings shit back on top. But... <laughs> this 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 chapter chapter just just like with his lasso, whoosh, all pulling it in, pulling in the the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I just, think just we wait, should. Wait. I think we should move on to the whole like, undeath causing pain and discomfort to the souls, because that's mm. like a big reason for people disliking necromancy and fearing it and hating it and whatever. Yeah. Uh, I did have settings. a, I did have a, I did have a short story with that. It was basically a soul was being used as fuel for this great big undead abomination that had like multiple animal parts and heads stuck to it, and the soul was what was keeping it alive, essentially, well, keeping it animated, essentially. And the soul was just of a person who was innocent and etc. Um, enslaved, basically. Yeah, 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 pretty much. It was enslaved and just used as a fuel source. Yeah, that's um I I think the, the the part of the point is that like people inevitably make the connection between the corpse and the person. So they believe that if the corpse is harmed, then the soul must somehow feel it. Even though, you know, the corpse just decomposes, it just falls apart. Yeah. Isn't this oh what's the bloody word? When you know when you when you have something of value that's got no inherent worth, but it's got valuable, it's valuable to you. I'm trying to remember what, uh, what the term for that is. Sentimental value. Th thank you, yeah. thank you. It's would that be sentimental towards the corpse? Because it's like sort of, oh, this used to be my friend. I can't hurt him. I think so. That's partially true. Yeah. Which is also why undead can be really, really effective because it's like, oh, sh uh, it's, yeah. it's, oh, sorry, Aunt Maisie, I'm just gonna have to bash your head in with this great big uh, baseball bat with a brick stuck to it. Oh there. no, Dave! Oh, I've known you for ten years, mate. Now I'm just gonna lock you in a closet, and and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll fix you. There's a uh, there's a uh, both. Um, there, there's a scene both in the movies and the books. I think in the books, I know for certain in the movies where the orcs in in in, in um, Lord of the Rings where the orcs uh, shoot uh, the heads of the the dead at the. I believe yes. it was at Osgil, yeah. Yes, um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, they had the catapults launch them over and yeah. everyone was freaking out. 
I think we can draw an analogy between like using the the in a way tool uh, sorry as a tool something you know like like the body of somebody you knew and and uh, you know was was close with and using it as a weapon against yeah, yeah. as a weapon or as a tool or as anything really it's it's there's some kind of like very deep sacrilege written into that I'm just, I can't help but think of Genghis Khan now, because when he did it, it wasn't really so much um, he was doing it for sacrilege reasons. It was more, wasn't he just doing it literally just to take over the place he was invading at the time? Like, um, who are you talking about? Uh, Genghis Khan, when he was launching catapult, uh, it was it was catapulting uh, disease-ridden bodies into a uh, car can't remember which place it was, but it was launching them in, and disease was spreading through because of that. I think it's I'm... just a, a cruel, yeah. like, hard tactic, isn't it? Like, mm. just... Yeah. They did that with cows and stuff, too, in the Middle Ages. Like, just have a rotten cow and just launch it over the walls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's true in, I think, somebody does that in, in like, Warcraft, so... <laughs> Yeah, the the, the 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 yeah, the carts of meat can uh, shoot yeah 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 the meat cards. I believe to to produce that kind of damage. Yep. Should we go over some settings where necromancy results in like torture to the soul? Let's. Yeah. Uh, Harry Potter does, doesn't it? Because I don't know. Because I know I could I think I. <sighs> I only read up to the Half Blood Prince, and I didn't. I never finished that. But in the films, it's because Voldemort split his soul into like different yeah. dialectries. Yeah. And then you, you see, you and then you've got his soul into pieces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got uh, Harry, and after he dies or some shit, and you got spoilers. Um, <laughs> you got Harry uh, and Dumbledore there, and and they're in like limbo, and they've got um, Voldemort there, and he looks like a really shriveled up sort of. It's like Epstein's been at him. It's it's just like really kind of. Because of what he's done to his own soul. Yeah, I don't know much about yeah. Harry Potter, but in, in, in Warhammer, I don't know much about Warhammer either. But mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain that the <laughs> soul. Is the... One one line about Harry Potter. Imagine, like, achieving immortality for the great cost of your nose. <laughs> I'm not sure I would be ready for that. Hmm. <laughs> Christ, I'm reminded of jokes now comparing Voldemort to Michael Jackson because he's got no nose and he's chasing after a child. Oh, <laughs> fuck me. Uh, good, good job, Reiner. Uh, you have just cost Chip his money. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, we'll, we'll reanimate the channel. <laughs> yeah, that's... So anyway, um... Um... oh, before we go on to like the other fantasy settings where the soul is tortured mm. there's like a really good point that you could make about like people hating necromancers and the undead for the simple fact of um the labor that they bring so like if we think about the industrial revolution with the steam engine and everything they came mm. along with those machines and basically it took a whole heap of people's jobs and you could do the same with necromancy like you know, no more miners. Now the skeletons are mining, and now you mm. guys are out of your job. So perhaps necromancy could be hated for that reason. There's also there's also the very good aspect of you know like they like they suffer so the living don't kind of thing. I mean, um, I mm. think in America there was this sort of uh, mine that you had like a mining town, and pretty much if if you was if you was an adult and you was a bloke, you'd go into the mine. And there was an incident wherein um, a bunch of people were trapped in a mine, and a lot of them died. And I think that uh, they had to bring in other people from other places to work and whatnot. But there was only one bloke who survived, and the only reason he did survive is because he didn't go into work that day because he felt ill. So suddenly, tons of people, uh, tons of women were made widows, and tons of uh, kids lost their father. Pretty much, if you had skeletons or zombies doing that, it would not be a big significant loss because. You could just go in. You could get the bodies if if they're able to still if if you're able to get them. Um, 
Yeah. That is true. So there is always that aspect. I think the problem is like economics rather than like the stuff that makes sense. Because of course it doesn't make sense to have people mining when you can get zombies to do it. Yeah. But yeah. In terms of an economy where people require some kind of work to basically survive, then it could become a problem. So maybe if you had like some communist nation that just reassigned those workers immediately, it would be fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your dead corpse off to the gulag. <laughs> How should I say it? Um, I have a feeling that pseudo necromantic communism would probably be i mean i'm not saying it would be good it would be, it would be terrible but it would be at least effective like interesting effective yeah wouldn't it because or rather i can imagine the only probably um necromantic society would probably be some kind of like pseudo communism where um or like certainly like an authoritarian state where the if a person dies you know they immediately they're like okay you have like this this thing with the government government that like when you die you just get turned into a into an undead it'd be a tax-free society because you pay for everything in death right i don't think that would be, it would be that simple because you still need to have a hierarchy yeah, and you still need to have money in circulation. Like yeah. uh, the way the yeah. way that the way that my uh, necromancy country does it, uh, kingdom does it is, is if you offer like family the bodies of family members um, to be turned into undead and to then work, uh, you you pay less taxes because of that. Like you still pay taxes, mm -hmm. but you just you pay less, so then you can do other things you couldn't ordinarily do, mm -hmm. which allows for the country to better improve because there's more people focusing on areas where they wouldn't normally be able to focus on. Yeah, I, I, I doubt a post scarcity society is possible with even with necromantic things. But if we assume that it's post scarcity, there would still be people, let's say, um, with very very little. That's probably another podcast entirely. I'm it is. Yeah, yeah, I was just gonna. I'm interrupt you. Yeah, yeah, we do have necromancy society as a future topic. So yes, everyone reading this, spamming the comments. Nick, do do that, do that, do that, do that. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's go into the the settings where necromancy is like either good or bad. So like, coming back to Warhammer for a minute, I believe mm -hmm. like at least from what I've read of the the Gash books and everything that basically the undead are in some kind of torment and the Gash is like really enjoying that fact, and so are all the evil vampires and whatever. So why isn't it? Why is why is it? Why is he so edgy? It's like oh, the souls oh. are suffering. I don't know. He's this just a big edge lord. <laughs> it's it's him and Arkan. They just ugh. <laughs> um. He's basically just never gonna have his emo phase. That's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. An example Game of the game. Oh, keep going. I was just gonna say an example of a a good necromancer in fiction is uh, Necroscope. Basically, there's a guy called Harry Ko, and it's, it's a weird book because it's set in basically the, the Cold War with like modern tech and everything. But basically, there's um, this guy who's speaking to the ghosts and like using their knowledge to help the, the British spy agency fight against Russians. And there's like vampires as well. And they're like the, the evil antagonists that, you know, use necromancy for kind of worse purposes but in that book necromancers are the good guys because they speak to the to the dead to help against the, the soviets basically i am the lorax i speak to the dead <laughs> there is uh, a game called battle for Westnoth where uh, that has i think it's free i'm pretty sure it's free uh it's a turn-based game where there is a necromancer campaign where the main character basically raises an army of undead to defend his hometown and then the story proceeds from there and it's you know general like he gets cast out of his ho hometown like necromancy is considered evil but his own action 
in the story is not considered such. So, yeah, there's kind quite of like, a few uh, yeah. like that. For example, like Diablo Two, the priests of Rathma, they're good guys yeah. fighting yeah. against devils and stuff. Yeah, aren't they? Aren't they upholding like an order, like making sure that neither light or dark gets one That's over true. the other? Yeah, they're kind of like some neutral faction, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, in Dragon's Dogma, there's undead and there is necromancy, but it's not fully explored into. But basically, I think it's more in the case wherein, uh, instead of it sort of having definitely good or definitely bad, it's more of a natural thing that does happen and it's corruptive in nature. Kind of like, I guess, how radiation fucks things up for people affected with it. Like... If you're out at night, because the, the, the undead only come out at night, but if you're out at night, you'll have zombies and skeletons coming out the ground. You'll have liches and spirits roaming about the place. You know, it's, and then they and then they disappear during the day. Another good point oh. we can go into sorry. is, sorry, you can go first. No, no, so no, it wasn't that. That was just the background noise. I didn't realize that the little bit seeped in. My bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically, like sometimes in fiction and whatever. Necromancy is evil just because, like, for an arbitrary reason. And I do... Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just going to say, there's, there's two settings where this is kind of the case that I can think of. And they do explain it a little bit, but um, in Dungeons and Dragons Forgotten Realms, right? Mm. The, the necromancy of, like, you know, raising undead is basically always an evil act, and it can never be considered good because... Something like the skeletons are always lawful evil. So when you bring them into the world, you're bringing evil into the world. And there's just like no good way to go about it. Um, going on to that, would it be kind of similar to the uh, philosophy of, say, what are they called? Forge masters in Castlevania, wherein they take spirits from hell, or put them into dead bodies, and it turns them into demons. Could be. As in, it turns the bodies into demons that then do stuff. I don't know about that. That um, Castlevania stuff. It's it's what it's basically it's like the, they'll like take a dead body and they'll do magic to it and it's all the body the dead body will transform into a demon or some kind of like horrible uh, creature and it's because it's got the soul a soul from hell in it and the soul from hell has been warped and changed and uh, fucked with by hell itself so it's uh, it changes to represent that. So you're basically bringing demons into the world by doing necromancy. Kind of, yeah, yeah. So, would would that sort of be similar to bringing so. evil into the world? Yeah, I think so. That reminds me of Dragon Age because the undead and that are also demons. Basically, like the demons are always trying to get into the mortal world, and one means they do that is by possessing people, but they also possess corpses and walk around. Am I all right to talk about, say, uh, the thing I've got written down, like the definition of evil, like good and evil, and stuff like that? Sure. May I do the Elder Scrolls bit first? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, go ahead. So, um, in the Elder Scrolls, there's some sort of law that suggests that necromancy is inherently evil, and there's no good way of doing it. And the only, like, I'm sure there's plenty of like sources for this, but the only one that I'm personally aware of is there's a book called The Black Hearts on Trial, and it's basically about the various mages in the Mages Guild sort of having a, an argument for and against necromancy. And one of the mages that are against necromancy, a guy called Master Carlos, claims that necromancy is inherently dangerous, one cannot dabble in it, the simplest spell requires the spilling of blood, and immediately begins to corrupt the caster's soul. So basically, like... In the Elder Scrolls universe, there is strictly no good way to be a necromancer, even if you're using it for good things like fighting orcs or whatever. But are orcs inherently evil in Elder Scrolls? No. Orc lives matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goblins, then. I think they're inherently evil, aren't they? Uh, so orcs matter, but dead lives don't matter. Yeah. That's a double standard uh i think with goblins i think goblins are just more sort of they um how, how do i say it how do i say it without getting this channel demonic? actually no i just won't say it yeah it's a good idea <laughs> all right 
Um, what do you guys think about the whole like things just being arbitrarily evil? I personally don't like it. All right, here we go. Yeah, I've I've got ooh, I've got this big talking. About. <laughs> uh, can you repeat what what you've just said, Cheb? Like, um, what do you guys think about the idea of necromancy being strictly evil and there's no good way of using it ever? I personally don't like it. Yeah, I don't. Everything is personally, good about it. I think that it is evil and that it should stay evil and that is a big part of the charm now how you're going to use it is up to you but i think that necromancy is like a fringe thing it's like a, like a thing that monsters do and that produces monsters and i think it should stay that way because if you make it mechanical if you turn go zombies into golems if you turn ghosts into like ai or something you know proverbial ai it's going to be very very boring it is going to kill the appeal of it if you it takes say, away the charm and it's it makes it special in the first yeah. place but yeah. like yeah. It, it, it just it just taming it is going to kill it that's but what, what i think what in the instance of the the dead serving willingly for example Grim Dawn, where the, the the necromancers raise their their dead colleagues and the colleagues willingly serve and whatever, they're still sentient. They're they're not machines, but how can this act be considered evil when it's voluntary? Uh, wait a minute. Is it the corpse um, that's serving, or the like? Are they bringing the souls right back in? In this example, there's basically um, this group of necromancers, right? And when you go into the necromancy lair, there's like a sort of a lich dude there. And you talk to him and he says like, basically that he's been brought back to serve, but he's okay about it because he willingly agrees to it. But that that's basically, that's basically lich dumb. That's an entirely different moral conundrum. Um, I don't know. All right, another example. Coming back to Warhammer and Clan Rictus, right? Mm -hmm. The skeletons willingly serve that woman of Clan Rictus because they want to help defend their living ancestors against the um, followers of Nurgle. Surely this cannot be considered evil necromancy because the spirits are willing, right? Honestly, I I've mean, got that. I've got that in my uh, um, in my world as well. Let, let me reiterate what I've been saying. The point of it is like it, it is evil, but you can still use evil against evil. Like you can use poison to fight poison, right? That's that's what I've been saying. Using fire against fire for good reasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. just um, yeah. I just don't see how it's evil if there's no suffering being done. I've outlined a lot of reasons throughout this podcast, so I hope you were listening. I mean, I guess I listened, but I probably disagree with those points. Like, um, you I can mean, say, would you, would you want me to just like like dig up your grandma or mother and just like use her as my uh, cannon fodder? I mean, she's... honestly, if you do that with mine, as long as I get to talk with them, I honestly don't give a shit. <laughs> If she's willing to serve, I don't see why not. It would only be a problem if you were enslaving the soul. But if the soul is like, okay, yeah, I'll help no, no, you. No, I mean just the corpse. Just the corpse. Just the corpse? Yes. Yes. So I'm no... not doing anything with the soul. I, I'm just going to the um going to the graveyard right now and I'm digging up your mum and I'm putting <laughs> electrodes in her brain oh. and uh, now her corpse serves me. This may be Do a you strange think that is okay. This may be a strange answer, but I honestly do not mind. It's more because, like, I think I understand why, but it's more because the corpse, it, the body is the body, the soul is the soul. The body is not the soul, the soul is its own thing. The body is, like, um, how do I word it? Just like, you die, your soul moves on, and your body's just there and it's rotting. Why should they not give a shit? Because your soul's moved on. Yeah, and, like, organ donors too, right? That's, yeah, oh, that's but like, would it be okay to uh, donate organs of you know? I mean, 
to like take organs from someone who died and donate them regardless of whether the person is like consented or not i'd say that's fine it depends but i would say that's fine because there's different ways of going about it. You have the American way of going about it uh, in one of their little experiments wherein they um, mutilated uh, the bodies of babies without telling the parents. Um, that's not fine. But if you're, let's say if, if somebody dies and their organs are able to keep somebody else alive, I think regardless of their views on it, it is a good thing. I More think it's very difficult to to measure because it is. What if they get some kind of monetary? Like it opens up so much. Let's say so much. I would say um, space for evil, because what if they get monetary value out of that? So, so do we like then state that? the corpse of somebody belongs to their family or does it belong to them and do we listen to their um testament or do we just like do we go full communist and like all corpses belong to the state and whatever we can't implant into other people will be reanimated and will work for the good of the soviet union for me you know? it's really simple it's basically all about consent if if the parties are willing and there's no problem then there's no problem but if there's like mm -hmm. some kind of uh something being done against the wishes of someone else then i believe it becomes an evil thing okay i think if we started talking about morality as a thing that podcast, this podcast would not end today and it mm. wouldn't end within the next few years. So, um, yeah, that I is... will just leave it here what, uh, for, for, for the viewers to consider. Am yeah. I, am I allowed to say something real quick? Sure. sure. So when it comes, um, what was I going to say? <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to I was going to mention kind of like the Imperium of Man from Forty K and how like they have because they have like servitors and whatnot. Um, servitors are not dead. <laughs> no, no, but it's it's kind of like a similar sort of. It's it's without their consent, definitely. That is uh, that is definitely without their consent. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And it is technically for the good of the Imperium. <laughs> It is yeah. definitely a terrible thing, and I don't think there's anything in 40k that is good, aside from like singular actions. No, yeah. no setting piece you can you can like pick up in 40k and be like, oh, this is this is like morally good. It's like no. I mean, Vulcan Vulcan's pretty nice. I, I suppose I haven't read up on. on... Uh, he's one of the Primarchs. He's the kind of person yeah. that would nuke a planet, and then he would feel guilty about it, so he'd protect it. Yeah. He's, 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 he's a pretty chill guy. I mean, the, the whole morality maybe. side of yeah. things is kind of connected to why necromancy is considered evil. So we can delve into it a little bit, yeah. but I, I know what you mean. I don't want to turn it into a yeah. morality podcast. Oh. Ooh, because I remember, it's, I remember. it's like, what are you basing your morality on? And yeah. if you're basing it on entirely on, let's say, materialistic principles, mm. then it's difficult to make case for the evil of necromancy. But then it's evil. To, sorry, it's difficult to make case for literally anything from materialistic principles. Right, I've. I've... I've, remem I've remembered it. Uh, what I was gonna, what I was gonna say is, I can't help but think it would be more legitimate if there was an incentive. Because people, like when it when it comes to say anything, if you make it, if you make it so that the person themselves benefit from it, or somebody that they know benefits from it, then they will accept it a lot more readily. People, people don't care about climate change until it until there's something that they can get from it. And you can see this with a lot of things. People are inherently selfish and self-serving. Well, to a degree. I'm not saying everyone is, but to a degree. Um, so I can't help but think that when it comes to the whole, oh yeah, can we harvest your organs after after death and put them in other people kind of thing, 
uh, you can need to say. Yeah, it's no. like, am I gonna get money for this? Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. uh, but if you do this, then you get a, then uh, your niece gets a sticker, and your relatives get uh, some some money. So they get like a percentage of the proceeds from it. it. This already is kind of true. You can give your body off to uh, science for money. Mm. Nobody does that. Well, I mean, nobody. Nobody maybe is is a bit too much, but like very few people do that. But like, it, is, it is still an option. It's very expensive nowadays, and it's very tough to get for most uh, universities. Well, bodies are expensive. Yep. I want to say something about COVID, but that's probably the best left not said. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I mean, like, if no, no, if if a body dies, it goes into the ground. Like, like, um, it's it's way more. Let's say it would be a bit more difficult for a necromancer than you might think in in the modern era. Uh, even if there are a lot of corpses, like you would, because like every patient in most countries, including places where there's a lot of deaths, mm. most patients, you know, get still get buried at the moment. Um, there is a historical thing to be said there, uh, and this was back in the times of Burke and Hare, wherein they would basically just sort of. Uh, this was when universities were buying bodies and they weren't asking questions, so people would just raid uh, graveyards That's and whatnot to true. get to get the bodies that to then sell true. them to the universities, who would then use them to teach uh, medical students who were paying a shit on to get education. Yeah. yeah. And then Birkenhead decided, you know what? Let's not let's not dig them up because they've got so much security around them in mortis cages. Let's make bodies yeah. instead. Yeah. 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 So, and, but, but hence why the argumentum ad you know it's going like like um organs are going to sorry forced removal of organs is going to help people but then you have the issue of like what if there are um doctors who will kill people off in order to sell organs uh, if you think that's not going to happen no it will happen i can literally quote a well not quote i can bring up a situation in poland which happened where doctors as well as crews of uh like paramedics etc it was a very big big thing that was wor worked over at the turn of the century um where basically uh doctors and and, and all, all of the you know med care uh, collaborated in order to get money from uh, burials Basically, so they basically they, they, they ended up um, they ended up uh, injecting um, drugs into people, and essentially people that got like like into like car accidents, etc. They basically injected um, like like the kind of drugs that basically make your heart stop, but oh. they didn't have the tools to detect them at the time, so it was not detectable. So basically, yeah, it was it was like like that the person died and uh the the family paid for the burial and because of that it, there was like like a percentage to the burial company percentage to the doctors percentage to the paramedics etc etc now it that's was a pure very, evil. that is yeah that, that is very very pure evil um thing hence why i think i think it may may produce the danger of this essentially um, um yeah going on to that there's two because isn't there also that uh quote unquote rumors from china that are harvesting like organs and whatnot from prisoners and yeah yeah, yeah and in that. places and in places like uh, capitalist places like america where money is worth more than anything and everything how, like if that if, if if doctors were getting money from selling off organs you can guarantee that the life expectancy in America would just drop significantly. Like you would, you'd have um, people going in for one thing, and then they. Just... I mean, allegedly there are already um, university. There has been some kind of a big thing in the U.S. that was revealed about um, universities paying money for aborted fetuses, the parts of aborted fetuses. Mm. Uh, to doctors and it was a very big thing because like the point is like if if there's an abortion going on like like if you want to give um the the, the remnants of that to the uh 
the university, then there shouldn't be any any money being exchanged. It's for the good of science, you know. Yeah. And yeah. because there was like money being exchanged, and it was proven that um, that's what raised a lot of controversy. I I can't like bring up like the names of the actual case, but I'm pretty sure if if you like look up look it up, you're gonna find it. Yeah, that's a big issue when you mix money into moral matters. Yep. And it's impossible to, to like, to like keep apart easily. It's because of supply and demand mm -hmm. and prohibition only makes the demand work, uh, increases the demand, which yep. means that the supply will always be there regardless. Yep. Which is, which is also why America failed in their war against drugs. <laughs> yep. Well, well, now we're really going off the rails, I guess. Yeah. Um, just bring it you back. Know, should I, should I, I... I've had no more to say so far. Should I, uh, do you want to say something, Nekbeer? Um, not really, because I'm actually kind of forgotten. What was the original topic? It was, uh, uh why is morality. necromancy considered, yeah. Uh, like, why is necromancy considered evil? Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm not really too sure to add it. It's all about, like, letting the, uh, the body and the soul rest. It's also, you know, again, like, the sentimental value of seeing somebody being raised from the dead. I'm not too sure what else there is, like, any, like, what a person would usually have. Maybe it's because, like, um, people usually want to have a degree of control over things. Like, um, uh, they usually want people to, like, have, like, one way or, like, one method of things going about. Like, you know, this natural cycle of life, as well as, like, you know, like, there's the, um, you know, the, church, the churches and paladins, like, saying that, like, okay, there's no, really no way to revive someone. It's just kind of, like, they go, and now they're, go they're gone to a better place. Necromancers are, like... <sighs> See, it's basically their whole story. Paladins, oh look, there's a body. Necromancers, it's free real estate. <laughs> <laughs> basically, I, that. I guess a, a way that um, necromancy could be used in a negative sense is like basically murdering people to get three slaves. Mm. Yeah, if we take away the problems that disease and other things may cause like just purely logistical problems yeah um should i uh should i look into what of the thing i've written for the definition of evil bit because yeah i think the... so yes um okay so something consistent across fantasy is that when necromancy is portrayed it's usually done so in a negative context which we've gone over this does expand onto other things for little reason. It is generally perceived that dark things are thus inherently evil. You can see this with Chaos from Warhammer. You can see this with pretty much anything that's not holy, lighty shit. It's generally dark, dank, evil, dark colors, skulls, so on and so forth. Uh, everyone agrees that spikes and an overall edgy, dark aesthetic is this evil, yet not many people know as to why. It's It's there and we understand that but it is literally older i wouldn't say older than the world but certainly as old as civilization mm. like literally um in my opinion this comes from the vilification of, of such aesthetics in the real world which are then transferred over to the fictional religions in fantasy that mimic or have taken inspiration from christianity for example are and you can see it's with most holy things um a are generally seen as arbiters of good heroes, the good guys, so on and so forth. We've, we've all had stories where uh, you have people uh, like the legendary paladin hero in the moral right who goes to vanquish the dark evil lord, and the dark evil lord has this e exaggerated dark aesthetic to him. Um, Those are common tropes, that's true, but the thing is, like, this is not just Christian, this is oh, very, no, no, very, very old. An example. Yeah, this is like shamanistic, you know, beginnings of society level old. Um, necromancy by itself is magic that interferes with and messes with and manipulates the dead. It's it's uh, death being a natural yet terrifying and unknown concept. A practitioner of this fit the bill for being evil and misanthropic. Opposite to that, we see the gen uh, your typically perceived good guys and heroes, those living happy, happy just lives in their holy lands. They are comfortable, and if anything don't doesn't seem to, they are comfortable, and things don't seem to actually grow or change. And by that, I mean that when it comes to necromancy, 
These are people that are going into the unknown area and territories and areas. How many times has humanity had it where we've lost technology or people have been killed because ignorant people are terrified of the changes from that? I mean, probably just as many times as we have been destroyed by said changes. Mm. Uh, I random. Um, that's actually quite fair to be honest <laughs> yeah I, I feel like this this goes into the basis of morality and the history of humanity as a whole um which i don't think we are prepared enough um what, 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 what was you gonna what was you gonna say jeb um i was gonna say and it's, this is something i've wondered on and off for a while now but why is it morally okay to roast someone to death with a fireball like why is that considered not evil magic generally because like, compared to the alternative compared to like necromancy yeah, yeah. Uh, because fire uh, has like how should I say it? I don't think you should take the freaking um, D&D as an example of archetypal well, storytelling it's, it's, it's more like like just fantasy right. magic in general but like... yeah, yeah 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 it's like how how we should look at it is like magic of fire fire can be used for roasting somebody alive or for roasting meat and keeping you warm and warding off predators it has providing light in dark areas and if we like in all honesty if we look at the history of mankind Fire has been rather more beneficial to us than it has been damaging to us. Um, one Hence thing to why. that. So, I could use necromancy to defend myself, just as I could use like fire to defend myself as like yeah. a good utility. So, yes. like, I I just can't get over the thing that like what makes something evil is what you do with the thing. Not that the thing itself is evil. Like, yeah, I wouldn't so say a yeah. gun is evil. No, a gun Ooh. is just a tool. If you shoot someone with it, then, okay, you're, you're committing evil, generally speaking. But I do have a little I do have a little bit that goes slightly over that in the... But yeah, go on. Yeah, so basically, I, it's just like a hard thing for me to accept, I guess. There are, I would say, things which are more inherently geared toward destruction rather than um creation and 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 like more inherently let's say skewed toward damaging rather than healing etc etc well that is actually kind of more problem to fire but i think the reason why people are more okay with that kind of thing is that like um at a certain level, they they have to make compromises, or else they can't really be able to defend themselves. Like so being, so being uh, like roasting some of the fireball, that kind of depends on your position as well as like what's going on. If it's just basically That's you true. trying to defend yourself against the bandits, it's like okay, yeah. you're in the right. But if you're basically just yeah. raising an entire village just for the shits and giggles, it's like okay, yeah. jackass, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just pretty much like the, the, the use of it itself as well as your own position. Just yeah, people but... hearing necromancy is because they, they've only ever heard or like pay attention to the position of people who just kind of use it to try to kill as much people as possible. But, they very um, rarely ever see those who don't really do too much or like, do positives with it. What happens if I just decide to summon down, you know, fiery meteorites upon a village to destroy it just for fun? Like, isn't that just as bad as killing everyone in there with zombies? It is. At a basic level, it, it is just as bad. What we're looking at is like the essence of things. What do you need to do to engage in necromancy? You need to like taint yourself with like disease bearing agents of like you know fluids of, of corpses, etc. etc. You need to you know steal someone's body, uh, be they you know alive before or afterwards. You need to uh like the, 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 the i wouldn't say destroy but like ignore the the rules and most often the law which society stands on you need to utterly disregard the feelings of of like anyone that may consider 
let's say this resting place sacred or the corpse sentimentally like they may be attached to whoever died right you need mm. to do all of those things in order to engage with the thing first in order to start a fire you just need to rub two sticks together i see where you're you coming know, from like, now yeah i i do see it now right yeah hmm. hence why like um necromancy is a fringe thing because you need to take all of those steps to get there but that doesn't mean it, it can't be used for good you know you, you can take poison which can only kill or mostly kill and use it to cure somebody because that's that's what medicine does right and 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 you can do the same with with uh with necromancy it's just that it is the, the further out into the fringes of society you are the more difficult it is to kind of um actually actually make it happen you know to actually turn it into good hmm. um well i was gonna say so with 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 that so it's like with fire you're rubbing two sticks together with a gun you're you're getting metal naturally found in the ground and you're putting it together to do something natural but when it comes to necromancy you're going and doing a ritual to you know yeah it's i mean not, the, yeah, yeah. The, the the natural aspect of filling a metal pipe with gunpowder and that's that's arguably quite artificial but the fire it thing, is yeah i understand the fire thing it is because yeah it is but the thing is with it is that you're using naturally found stuff to make more <sighs> stuff to do more stuff i mean bones that's, are naturally found that is not entirely necessary i mean look at the the gun right the design yeah. of a gun is to kill something like that is what it's designed for mm. you sure you can like you can like shoot through the rope of a hangman sure you know you, you can do but it's like nobody feasibly looks at a gun and is like oh yeah that thing is for shooting groups of hangmen or uh for for uh you know alerting everyone to your position like no it's you point it at somebody and they die but... you don't you don't fire it off to call for help yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You, don't, you don't fire it off to call for help you, you fire it off to kill to, to kill somebody or deter them but it's so... also just a hunting weapon to get you food which is a good thing We'll get your food, but you also kill to get food. So, like, it or, is inevitably a tool of, of destruction. I mean, you can't or, live without causing some kind of harm to yes, something. Of course, of course. It's just like um, being, I would say, morally mature enough in order to know that, like, there is a degree of evil which must, in a way, be allowed for the society to function. So, like, I pick up the gun and I hunt the um and i hunt the, the the game with it and i don't want you know kill the game for, for fun i don't you know just... turn gun on my friend or somebody who has wronged me you know it's it requires this kind of like moral maturity i was gonna say point. you do get animals that hunt for sport um you'll have like packs of dogs you'll have that's true that's true i'm not saying that like that it doesn't happen it's just mm. not necessarily good from just not our needed. Standpoint. Yeah, because because we're we're beyond we're able to actually rationalize mm -hmm. and think. Yeah. Um, right. I've got an interesting point here, and I've been thinking over in my mind to better say it. Should I say it? Mm. So it... this goes into the the fictional propaganda as to why necromancy is evil. So, okay. The yeah, typical cliche. Typical cliche is hero beats big bad, saves the world, gets the woman, or if it's a woman, gets the bloke, etc., etc. Lives happy life, all all is well and good. You can see this with Lord of the Rings, where Aragorn becomes the king and Sauron is dead, and everyone lives happily ever after. It, it, you have that whole thing. I can't help but think that because with how we are as human beings, history is not only complicated, but history is also edited. You can see this in you can see this in England, where when I was at school, um, we weren't taught all the bad things England did throughout history. We were just taught like all of the not really all of the good things we did, but we were just given select points. Like, oh yeah, we we did this, 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 and this. I and don't think it's possible to edit the like mo like like moving drives of all of humanity. Mm. You know, I I don't think you can like you, you can sure you can like edit a text 
mm. in in Europe, but you can't like edit the whole humanity, right? No, you can't. No, you can't. Um, and... But it's it's you do little bits, you do little bits, and you and you only give certain bits. It's like with Henry VIII, we learned that he had uh, so many wives, and he did this and this. We don't, we didn't learn about his multiple attempts to take over France. We didn't learn about all of the bad things he. Um, and it's stuff like that. And I can't help but think that this would also extend to your typical fantasy settings that would have good people portrayed as good people versus bad people portrayed as bad people. History is, writ is written by the winners, by the victors. Yeah, And if you were to go to a country B uh, with a military and tear it to shit and take all this stuff, then you can always have the history remember that it, it was justified for X reason or this reason or that reason. Hmm. They will remember it very differently. And I can't help but think that when it comes to sort of with, like, say, Lord of the Rings, the his like the story that we're given in Lord of the Rings can very easily be something like that, because you can like you can have it wherein, um, say, somebody hundreds of years after Sauron reads about the story of Sauron, uh, or reads about the Lord of the Rings and everything that happened, and have this perspective or have this uh, view on how it happened. It's like, oh yeah, no, it happened like this, this, and this. The reality could be very, very different. What if, say, most of these, in most fantasy, it's not the case where this evil overlord is actually an evil overlord. Well, if it's just literally the ruler of a neighboring kingdom um, and the two of them had a dispute and to justify going over there and tearing it to shit and taking all this stuff, country A, the noble and good country with all the good stuff, then invents this big boogeyman to then go over to do what they want to do and then it's justified and everyone's happy because this evil has been vanquished and people need moral justification to do bad things. We can't just like do bad things and get away with it because that will catch up with you. That too. Mm. Arguably, I think you are. Um, I think just saying that, like, oh well, you know, necromancy is evil because we need good reasons to kill necromancy. Oh no, 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 no! I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not. I don't mean it just like that. I mean it more so in a case where it can easily be that the necromancy doesn't exist in the first place. It can easily be yeah. that the necromancy could be literally just any kind of of magic. It could be a shamanism, elementalism. It could be arcane, and like like you know that uh, who mentioned the thing with Elder Scrolls and the, the good and bad of like necromancy. The argument. let me let me give you a very thorough reason why things people believe things in like. Very, very, kind of very simplified reason. Mm. Well, for why people believe things in the ancient times. See, ancient times was basically the clash of cultures. People killed each other, did horrible things, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah, tribalism, nationalism, all of that. Okay. Yeah. The point of it was that the people with the best stories, with the best culture, with the best. Uh, discipline or whatever it is they have is going to survive. Mm. Like only those survive. Uh, Dar Darwinism in culture, basically. Basically that. Yeah. Hence why we have those beliefs because it seems like they stuck and they stuck all over the world. Um, Woods mentioning a historic, uh, historic thing that. England, kind of, well, I say England, it's, it's England, America, and I think France was involved in um, in the Middle East that kind of turned out to not be true. Um, I don't know. I feel like we've also been going this podcast for a long while. It's been about yeah, like, yeah. Let's let's minutes. let's close it up here. Yeah, I was so, I was, was going to say like yeah. Sorry, no, go on. Closing thoughts, guys. Like, have you had your minds changed about the morality of necromancy? Is there like what what do you think like how would you use it in your fictional setting and you know that kind of thing uh, who wants to go first go first oh, uh, shall i shall i go first yeah yeah go oh, oh, cheers. um the way i look at it is anything can be used for good and you can you, anything can be used for good and with that it, it, I, I look at this with communism look at this with socialism look at this with a great many things in the world which are often vilified and you know deemed ab absolute abstract evil and there's no way they can be used for good things i can't help but think that when it comes to necromancy it is definitely something that is unnatural it is definitely something that is absolutely fucked because it, it, i mean come on it's it's you've got the a, a dead person coming up from the dead and going and, and shambling around that's not exactly the most natural thing in the world. 
However, despite that, you can still use it for good reasons. It's it's as um, I think uh, it's Van Helsing says it in the in the film uh, played by Hugh Jackman. Um, evil may have made it. Evil may have left its mark on it. Evil may have created it, but it is not evil. So therefore, I cannot kill it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, should I go next, or do do you guys want to go first? Uh, I can go up next. All right. Um. Yeah, like um, yeah, like look, look at Boris. Like uh, it's kind of like more dependent on the setting. It's like what's gonna happen to like the soul or the body, or is like the kind of views might affect about like how I might actually try to use the necromancy itself. But I'd, I'd I still kind of see as like it it can be good for it can be used for either good or bad. It's just like people, it, like they, they're rightfully so should be wary of necromancers. They could just, they shouldn't be able to just uh, readily accept them. It's like they're usually people who are just kind of deep in these kind of like more darker practices, and so people should be wary of them until proven otherwise. Until they've actually kind of like proven so that they're not going to be dangerous towards them, then it should be fine. Hmm. Seventh. I think that necromancy should be still, in itself, considered evil. And I still believe that its place is, like, not necessarily in in most, you know, main core of the society. But I still think that it can be used for good. It's just that it is very difficult to do so. And I think that it should be kept that way if you want to... You, you want to pick up something that requires a lot of moral sacrifices, then you are stepping on a very thin line. And I believe that I, I both endeavor to do that, to, to kind of depict that in my own fiction, and I hope that you will do similar in yours. Yeah. So, um... No, for... no, no sorry, go on. Uh, for me, like, I came into this with, like, a very materialistic kind of view. But, um, my mind has been changed a little bit. Like, for example, I can really clearly see the the difference between, you know, the fire magic and necromancy with the example we, we gave before and discussed. So I think, like, but I think that even though necromancy kind of has its its roots in darkness because, you know, you're... We're dealing with death and there's the whole societal stigma around that. I still think that ultimately consent trumps that. So if if you had a necromancer that before it raised a corpse, it contacted the spirit, said, you know, may I use your your body for this and that, and the necromancer was able to get that consent, I think that this is okay even if the necromancy as itself is kind of a dark art. So that would be my thoughts on that. But yeah, I did have my mind changed a little bit, so that's cool. I do enjoy having my mind changed. So uh, yeah, what, what were you going to say, uh, Ghost? I actually can't remember now. Oh, okay. I, was, I had something in mind, and I think it was called... Doesn't I think matter. It was, Doesn't I think matter. It was... Closing statements. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you all for participating i think this is a very good one quite an interesting one thank, thank you for you. having us Chebu. yeah thank you very much for having us it's, it's been a blast yeah yeah all right see you guys see you see, see you